to episode 37 of the podcast. Thank y'all for tuning in as always. And think today's going to be a great show. It's one that's important to me. You think this 37 or 36? Psych, I'm only playing. Yeah, I just, I just checked. I just checked. <laughs> no, I just played. I just wanted to get you one time. Yeah, nice try. Nice try. Almost. Almost. But I was just like, uh, either I'm wrong or what I've been loading online is wrong. Like, I skipped a number somewhere. Nah, you're right. But this episode 37, almost at a milestone mark of 40. But um, wellness check, how you doing this week? Had any, any highlights? No, nah, not really no highlights. You know, just a... Uh, Regular week, regular week. Mm. What about you? Uh, yeah, I think I had pretty good week. I think the highlight for me, although it's bittersweet, is that I closed um, the chapter on my fourth season of coaching. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a good season for us. You know, a lot of guys, I think, took – steps growing you know personally you know in their development which is probably most important to me like you know my new thing is as you know I reflect on you know why I coach it's not about the wins on the scoreboard it's the wins that these guys make in their own personal development and you know being that much more equipped to tackle challenges that life brings so you know it's kind of a new perspective like of course I go into every game wanting to get a W But I get more joy out of, you know, when guys are like, yo, Kev, thank you for, you know, basically all you've invested in me over the past one, two, three, four years. Like, that means more than any regular season win, playoff win, than than anything. So, you know, it was a great year. Great year for guys. Well, I should say my highlight is making it here today. And still being alive and thank God for waking me up and giving me um, some breath and air and life. Oh, yeah. So that's definitely a highlight. I agree. I agree. Can't take life for granted because at any given moment, it can be gone in a blink of an eye. Um, So today we are going to remember Kobe. Um who died tragically a couple weeks ago. You know, this was something that was kind of difficult for me dealing with, um, just because, you know, Kobe was someone I looked up to growing up, especially playing basketball. Um, And, you know, even throughout my childhood, like I didn't really realize how much of an influence he had on me until, you know, he died. You know, you start really thinking back over the years You know, like the fact that, you know, I totally forgot until my mom mentioned it, like on my birthday, like his poster was on my my door. You know, I had Iverson on one wall, on one door. He was on the other one. You know, so two of my favorite basketball players of all time. And, you know, both of them, you know, you kind of take different things from both of them, right? And so it's like things like even like that, like the fact that, you know, sophomore year high school, I wore 24. Because I was like, yo, I want to, I want to be like Kobe. Oh, really? Right, but yeah, but you know, junior year, I had to, I had to switch that number up. I was like, yo, this twenty four might be putting a little too much pressure on me, <laughs> you know, <laughs> trying to live up to it. But you know, it, it was a lot of things that I did embody, nonetheless. But you know, I think it kind of took me a while to get around to accepting the fact that Kobe's gone, just because no one saw that coming. Like, no one. Like, you didn't think that that was going to happen. And, you know, the day before the Lakers were in town here in Philly, LeBron passed Kobe on the all-time scoring list. And, you know, I even went down to um, the hotel to watch the Lakers get on the bus to go down to the game. Oh, you did? Yeah, so it was just like... Did you see him? mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got videos and whatnot. And, you know, the next day... One of my boys texts me like, Kobe died. And I'm like, no, nah, it's probably like some hoax. Like they probably, you know, have people on yeah. social media always trolling. I'm like, they probably just saying like he died because he couldn't handle LeBron passing his scoring record, like some type of joke. And then I get an article about a helicopter crash. And, you know, that's when it starts to make sense because, you know, 
Kobe travels by helicopter, right? And, um, you know, I really, like, I couldn't even watch a lot of Sports Center or the news or even go on social media just because I felt like I couldn't take it. Um, you know, this is a guy who, you know, you know, I had dreams of, like, meeting one day, like, just to be able to shake his hand and say, hey, you helped me, you know, get through X, Y, and Z. You know, really adopting your mindset had a positive influence on me. So, you know, just realizing that that dream can never come true, you know, I think was one thing that hurt me. But also, you know, he was just doing so many great things. And I felt like he had more to give that. It was it was a little bit hard. I think he had a lot, very to give, a lot more to give. You know, um, the thing is, like, for me, when I first heard it, it like was a shock to me, you know. At first, I didn't want I didn't want to believe it, and I didn't I didn't believe it when I first when the first person said. It. But then when um it flashed across the news, and see like you know, and for me, it it just feels like something because like I only seen Kobe really met Kobe. I, I seen him when he was a baby, when he was born, when he was like um, you know, his father brought him in the locker room when right before one hour games and stuff like that. You know, um, then coming up, you see him, but knowing his father, knowing his grandfather, who I talked to, his grandfather used to talk to me all the time. Coming up in a Sunny Hill League, and you know, it's like a family when you re reunite like that. It's a family, so that was one of the family persons that was lost, man. And you know, and I don't know if it all the feeling go out for Kobe because I mean Kobe touched the world, man. Like the world, we talking about different countries and everything. Like you know, our celebrating Kobe thing. You know what they doing in Italy for him? Um, what they, you know, like China or something. You know, you just hear so much and like you know, I guess it was a shock to the world, man. You know, and you lost somebody that was great, and you know, you still was kind of celebrating his retirement you know or he was still a part it's still fresh you know like it's still there mm -hmm. you know and like you know even in the news today you still hear things yeah. you know what they doing on the 24th they doing his thing at the staple center you know so you know for him and his daughter and, and like they saying the two and the 24 you know his daughter i think wore two mm -hmm. and he wore 24 and that's what they celebrate yeah, and you know that him losing his daughter, who, you know that 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 made it that much harder to kind of accept as a reality. And you know, once you start seeing a lot of videos of them two like interacting, like I felt like they were the same person. Like you know, how kids tend to take on you know different characteristics of their parents. I felt like they were that was like the closest you can get. Like mannerism, she was she had a goofy side. Like you saw Kobe's goofy side a little bit more around her, and you know you could just tell like yo that's that's his child. I and I guess that's why they called her, you know, Mamba Sita. <laughs> but one um. of the there were like two videos of that, you know, about G G G that stood out the most to me, and one was when they were playing in like their house, and you know they're playing one on one, and like Kobe comes up and he like crowds her right. And then she does a little jab step into his body and then swipes through and goes to the basket. And I'm just like, what kid at that age is doing that? Like, she's been being taught from probably since she could walk. You know, like, yeah. she just fell in well, love with the game. Well, I, before she would walk. Yeah, like, you know? I got guys that, you know, come into my team and they don't even do moves like that. They're not even thinking, like, oh, if a guy crowds you, let me, you know, use my pivot go into his body a little bit so now I can step away, create a little bit of space. Like they don't they're not on that level that she was on when she looked like she probably was like six or seven in that video. You know, and the other one was when he was on one of the late night shows talking about how, you know, people come up to him like, Kobe, you gotta you and, you know, your wife gotta have a son so someone can continue the legacy and, you know, his daughter be like, No, no, I got this. Like, it's on me you know. So those are like two of the things that really stood out the most. And you just look at Kobe as like a dad. And like, I feel like me playing basketball, I always felt like I wanted to have a son just, you know, quote unquote, continue on a legacy. Cause like, you know, like women's basketball is, you know, something that I actually, you know, enjoy to watch. Right. So I wouldn't imagine having a daughter out there killing the game. Cause girls actually listen more than boys too. Like coaching girls is easier. 
bro, you just was explaining about um his daughter and which you know she probably seen him. You know he probably works out so much. You mm-hmm. know, and he probably take her to the gym. Probably you know have her with him, just like it would be a son, but it, with a daughter. Yeah, can I can I go over some of his career highlights? Because this man's resume is like off the charts. So we all knew Kobe kind of grew up in Italy, right? Then he went to Lower Marion High School where he's a four-year starter. And I don't just mean like four, oh, he was starting. My man was getting buckets, right? 13th pick in the 96 NBA draft. You you know who drafted him? The Hornets drafted him. <laughs> yeah, and what they do with him? Uh, trade him. <laughs> well, that was all in the working from the beginning. Uh, uh. <laughs> what? I always thought that was funny. What? That he got drafted and traded right away? Yeah, like you gotta be kicking yourself. But you gotta you gotta you hindsight gotta, is always twenty twenty. No, but you gotta remember you yeah, you can say something like that, but you gotta remember the Hornets might have didn't need him right now. And they might have got a better what they thought would be a better deal. Because yeah. they don't have no championships neither, you know. Yeah, what I mean? I know. So you would think, but you know, um, like you got one of the best minds was in basketball was Jerry West. You know he was, uh, you know, good. So you know he made the deal when somebody, you know, he stole him. Mm-hmm. He stole him. You know. Yeah, and and so you know he was traded to L.A. where he ended up winning five championships over twenty seasons. His two NBA Finals MVPs. He was the most viable player in two thousand eight. Kobe should have had more MVPs too. That's probably a conversation for a different day. I feel like his reputation in the media kind of hurt him because there's certain years where you look at his numbers compared to guys that won it, and you're just like, I don't know how they came up with that decision. But then, you know, like sometimes there's that, it's like kind of that political side to the NBA. Well, definitely that. So, you know, there's there's a lot of things there, but... um. Let me get back to this. Oh, why my thing glitch? That's why you got to have a backup right there. You got to have a plan B when you prepare it. Um, 18-time NBA All-Star. Four-time NBA All-Star game MVP. Wow. And then 11 All-NBA first teams. My man was killing the game. Couple second team, third teams. Nine-time NBA All-Defensive t- first team. My man played D. He's not James Harden. <laughs> Different category. Kobe played both ends of the floor. You know, three times second team all defensive, you know, two time NBA scoring champ, slam dunk champ, all rookie second team, got both his numbers retired, and, uh, you know, not to mention gold medalist, right? Two time. You know, you know, when you say that, I still remember a thing where it said, like, um, Kobe, when he first came to the Sunny Hill League, he didn't score a point. Mm-hmm. You know, and, like, you know, like his father told him, I still love you. But, you know, Kobe just worked so hard. You know, you just got to say the work that he put in. Because you talking about going from a league to not scoring a point in a season and becoming who he became. Mm-hmm. You know, it's only one way to do that, Didn't man. he, like, airball his first shot in the NBA? I think. I, I think his first game he shot, like, an airball. It's, like, near, like, the left elbow or something. Yeah, but, yeah. But, you know. That could have been because it was his but, first game. Yeah, but just you know? look at how he started and look at how he finished, you right. know, going out in his last game, dropping 60. You know, like, I remember, he, you know, what Eddie Jones and him was on that team. You know, people right from here, right from Philly that was um, was already there, you know, that Kobe used to play against. Like, I, I think I was telling you, when Kobe was in high school, they used to go down the spectrum and, and play back mm-hmm. then, you know, and like right then and there, this was like high school, like you just knew and you just heard so much about him, him how he going to be, mm-hmm. you know, he just, I don't know, but then you just think about, you know, he, Kobe seemed to be a real focused person, man, focused, you know, um, and that do remind me of you, you, because you, you focus on what you do and, and what you do like that, and that's why you achieved what you achieved, and you probably still got more years and you're going to get greater. You know? I hope so. No, nah, you're um, definitely going to do it. Yeah. So, you know, when what was amazing, I think, is that, you know, Kobe, you know, began to transition into other projects. And 
just like he killed the game on the court during his 20 seasons, he started killing the game off the court, winning Oscars and Emmys. And, you know, I think one of the most commendable things that he did, or I don't even know if you say it's commendable, but, you know, probably more so admirable, is, you know, the pride he took in being, you know, hashtag girl dad, right? It's like it helped him, I think, really realize the importance of, you know, making sure women have one of these, right? Just like, you know, you see Kobe wearing a WNBA hoodie, being around different WNBA teams, taking his daughter around, you know, really being supportive to, you know, his sisters in the sport, right? Where, you know, I think that's something that's slowly been beginning to become more of a trend, but I think it's something that our society definitely has to support. You know, we should definitely um, make sure women have opportunities because just like groups are marginalized based on race and ethnicity, people are marginalized based on gender. So making sure, you know, we have an inclusive society where there's equal opportunity is something that's very important that I just loved how, you know, he worked on like coaching his daughter. You, ne you never really see, like, I don't know if he ever like coached a boys team or anything like that, but just him being a leader to his daughter's team, I just always thought that was something, like, special. Well, you know, that's what he had, daughters. So, you know, th to him, like, I, you got to say, coaching, you know. And mm -hmm. that's probably something he he probably, like you said, was teaching her from from a young age. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and probably who else, how many other people you know that he was coaching? How many other people you know that he was really helping? Man, his, you, whole, his whole academy, man, that thing was packed. You know, um, I, I I was saying, you know, I heard about some of his charity and like, you know, he was doing, he had an after school all star program that he called it for ur urban kids or for youth that was, un, you know, f fortunate to to have some things. And he had this going across the across the USA, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so and I mean, he he did some other things, too, you know, which, like I said, like, you know what, some things come out and it's a sorry that you had to learn them this way yeah and that he was because like you said on the court we already knew what he could do on the court but we wasn't seeing what he was doing off the court and it took something tragic like this to to bring some of the things out which i always believe he was a good person because like i say i go back to his grandfather you know like um his his, his father um how, his wife and then like one person like like who i think kobe might have learned a lot from too was his uncle um, his name, um, Chubby, Chubby Cox, man, like, um, he was like, I'm, I'm cause like I'm saying in the, in the Baker League, they beat us two years in a row in, in the championship. Um, Kobe dad and, and Chubby played the guard. Is, is that the league when you, your famous story about when you stole the ball from him and he was calling for a foul? Oh yeah, that's the league. Yeah. Yeah. You, you want to tell us that story? Well, no, you know, what? if Joe ever see this, you know, he could just remember, like, he was still dribbling air, and I was going the other way, and he thought that he was telling the ref I fouled him. But I said, you ain't even know the ball was going. How you how you going to say I fouled you? Yeah, I always, always love that story. Um, but, yeah, you know, you know, to your point about all the things he was doing off the court, you know, Kobe had this mission, you know, to basically show you can be more than an athlete, right? You can be in anything you do, you can be more than your day job. Like I work in commercial lending, but I'm also very passionate about, you know, coaching basketball so that I can give back to kids from my community. You know, I'm involved with a nonprofit where I can, you know, be a part of an organization that gives back to kids from, you know, communities right. like mine. And, you know, just being able to be more than, you know, I'll say you're nine to five, right? It's like when that, um, I think it was a Fox News reporter that told LeBron to shut up and dribble. It's like, no, we, we can be more than athletes. Like, we're here to do more than entertain. We have things that we're passionate about, and we can do anything we want, and we can be great at it. Um, so that's something that, you know, that we, we got to carry forward. But, you know, I think back to kind of like my early memories of Kobe, and he always came down against the Sixers, right? Because him and Iverson, kind of like a big rivalry. Then in 2001 in the finals, you know, you see this guy and he's just like killing us, right? And then even, you know, throughout the years when, you know, they're playing throughout the season and, you know, there was like one time in particular, it was around Christmas and, you know, our family was all over like Uncle Saul's house and Sixers versus Lakers and it was kind of like a split house, right? 
like Michael and Men was supporting Kobe, and then me and his wife, and my mom, we was all supporting AI, right? And little little the men I think was with AI too, um, but it was like just seeing them battle, right? It was like it was something there, um, and you know, like years later, you know, I started really following them again, especially during 09, 2010 when they won the title. Cause that was right around the time I was in high school, right? You know, playing high school basketball. I started watching, like really watching and studying basketball more around those times, and you know, you start to you know, kind of look at what this guy was doing. You know, around that age, we used to, me and my boy Steve would watch like a lot of YouTube videos and stuff on basketball players trying to learn moves and whatnot. But then one thing that stood out to me about Kobe is I think down in Miami one night, he like missed a shot that would have won the game or sent it to overtime. And, you know, Miami nightlife is fun. So while everybody went out, to enjoy South Beach, he stayed at the gym and shot that same shot over and over again. And that's a story that never left me to the point where, you know, back in like 2017, I was out of college, I was playing, started playing, started my rec ball career and had an opportunity to win a championship game. You know, we needed, I think we were down one with like four seconds left. I went the length of the floor, you know, Got around the right wing, gave the defender a little hesitation. He dropped back. So I pulled up, shot went down and out. You know what I did the rest of that summer? Okay. Each time I was in the gym, I, I would have to hit at least like 10 shots from there. It wasn't like Kobe, you know, probably in the gym for hours shooting that shot. But that shot still haunts me to this day. So whenever I'm in the gym, I always try to at least get one of those in there. So at least it's like, it's like fresh. Because you know how you miss a jump shot and you know it was off? Mm-hmm. It's like ah, I brought it. The ball was too far on this ankle. I didn't bring it straight up the line. You know, like little things like that. So it's pre- preventing those. But it's just like one thing that stood out to me was his work ethic. You know, like you say that. You know what? I like. You know, I was on YouTube this before this death, Kobe death or something like that. And you know, Gerald Henderson, who played with the Sixers, played with Boston. His son made the league. And they were playing against the Lakers in L.A. And it was funny because he was saying how Kobe came, you know, come out early and shoot around. Kobe couldn't make a shot, didn't make a shot, right? He said that court is off. He said, like, the court was off. And he said, like, he kept on. They came out, measured the court. It was like, like a half inch off or something like that or too low. Then they raised it, and Kobe just Killed yeah, they came when they yeah. They, the other it. one is I, I like Jay Williams' story too, when he's talking about you know he gets to he gets to the gym. I think he was playing on the Bulls. He gets to the gym. They're playing the Lakers, and you know he gets there. I think maybe three hours before game time. He want to get a little workout in, and he said he gets there and Kobe's already there in like a dead sweat, like he's been working out right, and so. Jay Williams said, you know, he works out for like an hour and 15 minutes or whatever, like hard. He said the whole time Kobe's going like game, doing game moves, right? Mm-hmm. And then Jay Williams is like, I, you know, I finished up. And, you know, the ball's still bouncing down there. And then, you know, Kobe finishes after him and goes off that night, like kills him. And then, you know, Jay Williams is like, I just had to ask him, like, how – like, why, why did you work out so long? And, you know, Kobe's like, because you was there. I'm going to let you know. Like, no matter what you do, you will not outwork me. And it's that mentality that can really allow you to accomplish some things in life. And that's a story that I think everyone should watch and really try to take something away from. Because a lot of times, you know, we, we cut ourselves short in life. Like, even when we think we've given all we had, that like you got to find something that makes you go you know, that extra mile, because it's there. It's a mad, it's a matter of, can you, can you pull it on? And do you want to truly pull that out of you? And that's when you end up, you know, really making strides in life. You know, um, like it's like you said, it's so many stories like that. Cause I remember Tracy McGrady telling a story like that, but you know, you know what? I, I wish in a way 
that I had some of that coming up and not coming up just being in the streets or trying to live the streets or seeing how some people work ethic really was. Like, you know, like, like you, you know what? Like I say, this really is a shame and a disgrace. But you know what? The news that going to come out of this and what going to bring out it could probably going to help so many people. Mm -hmm. You know, because it, it's so much more that some people didn't know that can really get to know now. Like I said, it's a, you know, it's definitely a shame it, it, and it's a tragedy. But you know what? Like, you know what? This probably helped me more now realizing what I should have did or could have did. But now, how, how, how can I go out here like we doing this show today and we can reach some people and let some people really know that the, what they might have never knew before? Because some things I never knew about Kobe, but like now I know. Like I knew that he worked hard or something like that because, you know, they used to always talk about Michael Jordan. But, you know, Kobe was supposed to be the next Michael Jordan or is he better than Michael Jordan? That's a question that's going to be other people's opinion. But you know what? Look what he's doing. And, you know, like you said, off the court, too, he became a, a pretty good businessman, too. You know, so, I mean, like, like I'm saying, I'm not, I mean, it's a tragic thing, but you know what? It's also something great coming out of it. And, and like you said, it might, it's going to touch some people, but it's a shame the way that it got to touch some people. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you know, just going back to, you know, my love for Allen Iverson and how, you know, I also love Kobe, and there was something, you know, that I would take from each of them, right? Like, I love the passion that Iverson played with, especially being undersized, you know, the fight he brought day in and day out. Um, but Kobe was just different, right? When you talk about preparation and, you know, and working to get better. And, you know, Iverson shared this story uh, recently where I think it might have been their rookie year. You know, Sixers were playing out in L.A. for the, Iverson's first time out there. Kobe grabs him, they go to dinner, and then after dinner, you know, I think Iverson asked Kobe what he was doing, and Kobe said, I'm going to the gym. I, he said, yeah, asked Iverson, what you doing? He said, I'm not going to the club. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's like, there's the difference, you know, and that might be the reason why there's five rings between them, partially. Kobe has some more weapons, I would argue, but... You know, is is like that mindset that hey, I'm here with a goal. I'm not gonna let anything distract me from accomplishing this goal, and that's hard to do, because we all want to. There's all there, we all have our vices, right? Like for years, I could not put an Xbox controller down. Like I just couldn't do it. Like my re my free time was. Xbox, Xbox, Xbox for a while, right? And then it was like, all right, I gotta, I got all these great ideas that I'm having trouble executing because I'm letting these distractions creep in. So what you gotta do? You gotta make a decision, right? You gotta make a choice. Do I want to execute these great ideas, or do I want to have some enjoyment that's not really gonna bring me something in the long term? It's a choice. Yeah, you know, too, sometimes you just look at it. What if Allen Iverson would have put in the work that Kobe did? Mm -hmm. You know, or, and like, you know what? Like, like you said, the mind frame. But the only thing you all we can, you could guarantee, when they both stepped on the court, they were... Oh, yeah, you, it was on, you, it was on. It, it, you know, it was like that, you know. Like Iverson said, you talk about practice. Imagine if he would have been going to practice. Imagine if he would have put more in. Maybe maybe it might have been good, or maybe, but you know what? They still two of the greatest. Yeah, and you know, just going back to Kobe's mentality. So when I went into high school, so that was two thousand nine, which was, you know, I'll say Kobe's last few prime years, you know, and so, um, I think at that age when you're thirteen, fourteen, you know, you're starting to grow. But on the basketball court, it's also like, who do I kind of want to be like, right? What persona do I want to kind of embody? Who am I going to try to chase and groom myself into? And I really think that, you know, that guy was Kobe. So just the way he would, you know, walk on the floor and almost have that killer look. Like, it's almost stoic at times. You know, like, no, like no expression. It's just like, yo, I'm coming in here. I'm going to get my job done. 
then I'm going to go back to the lab and get better. And so, you know, being a freshman, you know, I definitely wasn't, I was kind of happy to make the team because there was points where I thought I was going to get cut, even from JV for some reason. <laughs> um, but, you know, I walked in there and I just worked, I just worked my tail off. Right. And like Kobe said, like, no matter if he was the starting guy or what, you know, he worked like he was the 12th man off the bench. You know, I think that that's important because, you know, when you're working like your spots in jeopardy, that's what that's what makes you better. Like I always tell my story about little Eddie, like I thought my spot was in jeopardy to him. So that kept me going. You know, I never got comfortable. And, you know, I think what also that allowed to happen was for the older guys to kind of take me under their wing because, you know, I talk to them now and they're just like, yeah, Kev came in, he would he would just work hard. Like, I was different than a lot of the other freshmen. Like, not necessarily skill-wise, although I probably, you could argue, you know, we had a one-two punch that freshman year on JV. JV. I'll say I, I was the second guy in a one-two punch. But, you know, they knew that my mindset was different Sophomore year, I was starting on varsity. And then junior year, I was a captain. So I was a two-year captain, which doesn't happen often. But even in that, I wish I was a little bit more vocal back then. Because I had, like, half of the, the Kobe mentality, I felt like, with, you know, coming, working your tail off, trying to get better, you know, helping teammates. But I felt like maybe I could have helped them a little bit more if I had been a little bit more vocal at times. But that was something, that was an area I needed to grow in. Uh, You know, what you say, that just had me thinking. See, when you said, like, I guess me coming up, I had more of the Iverson mentality. You know, um, play, go hang out, go do different things instead of really putting the work in. You know, um, some of that, like, in a sense, probably help me at a you know when for y'all for you or something like that you know or for like like brianna or the talk see because like one thing is like i never wanted y'all to be like me you know i that's something i never wanted and like you know like i'm glad like like i said like i used to always tell people and i tell people today you were the better point guard to me like i might have been more talented or you know I don't even know what word to really use. You can say but talented. I think that you were always smarter. And like the way that you came up, I, I was so happy. Like like you know, like that's why I never wanted to show you my my other side of my life that what I would do, you know, when it came to doing illegal things and stuff like that. I never wanted you to really see that. I never wanted none of y'all to see that. You know, um and like sometimes like I said, like when you just hit the point is like we talk about Iverson with practice. No, I went to practice. I love going to practice. I love playing the game, but I didn't work as hard as I could have worked. I took some things for granted, you know? And like, you know, like I said, like, you know what? In the hair, well, like I said, I knew how Kobe was or heard how Kobe was. You know, you, you hear, like when they used to talk about Michael would go to lift weights on a day of the game. You ain't supposed to do nothing like that. Them guys dedicated and, and they, they look what they did. Different breeds, man. Yeah. Different breeds. Yeah. You know, I think Kobe always was criticized for being arrogant, right? I don't know if that was necessarily the case. Maybe young Kobe. But when you look at how he was willing to you know, kind of pay forward all he had, right? All his experience helping young guys like Jason Tatum, Kyrie Irving. It really sounded like if you called Kobe, he was willing to let you get in the gym with him, right? And so I don't believe a guy that is, like if you're arrogant, you're going to be very self-consumed. I don't believe if you're that self-consumed that you would be that willing to help other people. And I'm I'm trying to think. Um, somebody else. Um, I I heard him. He he was doing a show one time, and he was saying how Kobe really helped him. See, you know what? Like you were saying, some people talk about his Kobe being arrogant and all like that. And you know, like then like I heard some things like you know how Kobe didn't have friends and stuff like that. But if you hear 
what players say about him yeah. and how what maybe he didn't hang out maybe he didn't do all them things like you said he going to the gym but you know what he still was loved but you know what it's not only that and he was respected you know a, a you know you know he was still respected man you know like and like the things that you and i'm not just talking about him things since his death or people saying i'm here i heard these good things before this Mm-hmm. You know, so like, yeah, he might be <laughs> that, but that's just some people talking that didn't know or maybe had a problem with Kobe. You know, I don't think it's like the players and all like that. You know, so you know that, that's that's that. <laughs> yeah, and and you know, just kind of building off of of the idea of paying it forward. You know, that kind of pushes me to even be a better coach. You know, just looking at how Kobe you know, would invest in younger players. You know, I'm, that's what I want to do with, you know, the guys that I'm fortunate enough to have be a part of my team. I like helping them develop on the floor and off. You know, it's kind of like taking things that I've learned from playing or even researching now um, because I do a lot more of that these days um, just to, you know, help them be the best version of themselves. And I think that's that's something that, you know, has to be, you know, just like supporting women, and especially in, you know, in life and athletics, really. But we got to, you know, kind of pay for our experiences by helping people, you know. Cousin Terry always told me, he said, like, for instance, he's like, yo, your sister's, your younger sister, she should be better than you. And, you know, I probably was like eight or nine at the time, and I'm like, you know, you just shook your head yes because usually when Cousin Terry speaks, like, he's not going to really tell you anything wrong. So you just you just nod your head, and then he broke it down. He was like, you know everything you know, right? So you're supposed to make sure she knows that. And then she'll learn some things on her own. So at the end of the day, she should have more than you because she got whatever she learned and everything you know. Right. And so that's how I kind of look at things. So guys that I'm coaching – like, I want them to be a better player than I was because hopefully I can invest everything I know and they can get everything they know from a variety of places to add in their tool bag or their, you know, their IQ in the game, like whatever it is. You know, even for those guys off the court, you know, they're going to learn things from different people. Then they can learn my perspective on things and the combination of that should help them you know, really achieve some things in life and, and go places. So it's, it's all about paying it forward, man. And, you know, I think that, you know, that's what we got to focus on, you know, keeping it going. Like keeping it going, keep passing down what we have to people that we come into contact with because that's ultimately what's important. And, you know, and I think that, you know, I think the biggest thing for me is, you know, believing that, even in death, there's life, right? So, you know, Kobe's gone now, unfortunately. But, you know, now I can use that as a constant reminder and a fire that, Kevin, you need to be the best version of yourself that you can be. Just like you used to back in high school where you was, you know, grinding day in and day out. Sun will say <laughs> sun up to sun up. <laughs> you know, felt like I barely would sleep at times. That's what you got to get back to because it's in me. I know it is. It's like sometimes, you know, you talk about making that choice between slacking and execution. It's like you, you got to do it. So, like, don't let Kobe's death be in vain. But it, it should spark something. Because we all knew who he was. We all knew know the drive that he had. We can have that same drive. But you got to make some choices. Well, like I said, you know what? Is it, like I said earlier and on this too. It's a shame, but it's so much good in it. Like, it's so much good because, like, you know what? Like, it can reach people now because, you know what? I, I mean, I've been touched by this. But, like, you know what? I'm just not touched in a negative way about this. I'm looking at the positive things. You know, um, and that's what I think it will be good for, for a lot of people. And like I said, I think a lot of people can learn something from this. Like you said, you're going to teach and they're going to do this. But I think that's going to touch a lot more people, too. Yeah. So we got to get ready to, you know, get up out of here, unfortunately.
But I guess the fortunate thing is we get to come right back next week, right? That's a good thing. All right. So, everybody, thank you again for tuning in. I hope that, you know, if you if you haven't already, just go to YouTube or whatever and look at videos of Kobe when he's speaking. Just hear some of the things that he talks about. And I guarantee you, you're going to have a new perspective on life. Uh, but remember, everybody, let's just try to adopt that Mamba mentality. And last thing, and certainly not least, please share our show with one friend. Send this episode to you know, your best friend, your cousin, your sister, your brother. Drop it in the group chat is what I always like to say. Or share it on your social media. Um, it doesn't take much. Just a couple clicks and it's there. Um, but yeah, we'll see you again next week. Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate you. Yeah.